Hi everyone. In this video, I will give a briefing on how to complete your IG2 that is risk assessment. In this paper, IG2, in this assignment, uh, you are assessed in your ability to apply your knowledge which you learn from IG1 syllabus and IG2 syllabus into a practical risk assessment scenario. So what you need to do here is you need to do a risk assessment in your workplace. So before starting this risk assessment, you need to complete your uh, all 11 elements. There are four stages in your uh, risk assessment. Uh, one is description of the organization and the methodology used for completing the risk assessment. Next is your risk assessment sheet. Then priorities, three actions with justification you got different actions in your risk assessment you need to prioritize it which most imp most important three actions and you need to give a justification on it then the last one is review communicate and check now let us go through them and uh, find out how we can complete this assignment to complete this risk assessment project you will be given a template with the four sections into it so what we discussed, those four sections will be there in your in the risk assessments template, and you can fill it either uh, a typed way, uh, word processing, or you can complete it by handwritten. The first part of your risk assessment uh, sheet is uh, description of the organization and methodology used. Here, you need to describe the workplace you visited and uh, conducted a risk assessment. So uh, the A means your project will be read by and evaluated by a person, someone who is far away from you. He, he may, most probably he will be in UK and he is assessing your uh, risk assessment from there. So you need to describe to give him an idea which kind of workplace you have been visited and uh, where you have conducted the act, uh, risk assessment. So what kind of activities uh, going on there, what kind of equipments and people are uh, working and what are the expected hazards in that workplace. So to give him a concrete idea about these situations, we need to describe the area we have visited. So what you need to include there, the name of the organization and if you, if you feel you need to keep some confidentiality, you don't want to disclose your company name there you can give a fictitious or, or, or a, a different name there is no problem in it now you need to give your site location here at least you need to give the country and the state where you visited if you want to describe it doesn't matter <laughs> then next you need to write how many workers are employed by the organization so you can classify this how many managers how many supervisors how many uh, floor uh, uh, employees or uh, laborers those kind of details can be given how many safety officers if you want you can give those kind of details the next you need to give a general description of the organization which must include the products manufactured what kind of products this company is manufacturing or what kind of services they are providing and the types of activities undertaken for example if you are uh, visiting a construction site there will be construction activity there will be cement mixing there will be excavation there will be worker tight like scaffold so those kind of informations can be given and the shift patterns worked uh, they're working in single shift like eight hours or double shift or three shifts day and night whatever you can include there in this description the next you need to describe the area to be included in the risk assessment or which area you have discussed for example you are uh, you visited a company or your company is very large and uh, different activities and different locations they are working now you may choose to do a risk assessment in the construction site or worker type site or a warehouse or a manufacturing site so that site you need to describe specifically then you need to give any other relevant information required like uh, who has the day-to-day -day responsibility for health and safety in the organization and if you find anything relevant that also can be included in this section the, in this part there is one more section you need to include that's about uh, the methodology used for the risk assessment so here what you need to describe the sources of information that you consulted with whom you consulted 
for this information to do the risk assessment is it the particular group of people like workers or supervisors or you you refer to some uh, like uh, user manuals or any other standards you need to give that the sources of information that you consulted you can find different sources in your textbook then to whom you spoke to uh, again supervisors or employees or, or HSC manager to whom you spoke to that needs to be included there and how the hazards are identified how did you identify the hazard there are different techniques to identify hazard like a task analysis or using manufacturing information or any legal list any, any legal documents and the controls how did you identify the controls there are existing controls how do you identify that and what additional control measures are required how do you identify that so you need to brief those items in this section of part one now second part of your risk assessment is uh, risk assessment itself you have a table uh, with the different columns and you need to fill these columns here what you need to do is find at least 10 different hazards from your workplace and record it now these 10 different hazards should be from different five different hazard categories so means you're finding hazards only in electricity that is not accepted only fire hazards found not accepted or only uh, worker tight hazards that is not accepted so your hazard 10 hazards should be from five different categories now how do you know the categories the ig2 syllabus there are seven elements and these seven elements are different categories of hazards so you need to find a two hazard from each of these elements then you can score easily 10 hazards so uh, i'll brief those hazard categories for example in element 5 you have uh, different categories like noise vibration radiation mental health violence at work substance abuse at work so you can find uh, your hazard from any of these categories now sixth element has got work related upholding disorder that is ergonomics workstation design etc manual handling and load handling equipment so your hazard can be from these categories now seventh element is about hazardous substances that is like hazardous chemicals uh, so you can find a find a hazard from this category now eighth element covers health welfare and work environment walking attire confined spaces lawn working slips and trips movement of people and vehicle in the workplace work related driving so your hazard can be from any of these ninth element covers work equipment and machinery tenth element covers fire and eleventh element covers electricity so your 10 hazards can be from any of these and scattered in all these uh, if as i saw you as i as i said if you choose your hazards from one or two or three category you don't pass the exam you need to cover your hazards from five categories minimum and if it is more than five no issues if it is less than five category then you have a problem to pass your exam now your risk assessment findings should be uh, filled in a, a risk assessment table that will be given uh, that will be there in the template provided by your uh, training provider it has got around six columns first column states about uh, hazards category and hazard second column is about who might be harmed and how third column is about what are you already doing and fourth column is about what further controls or actions are required Fifth column is about time scale for further action to be completed, and sixth column is responsible person's job role. So these are the six columns you need to complete when you do your risk assessment. First column is about hazard category and hazard. So first you need to write your hazard is from this category. For example, you find somebody is working uh, on a scaffold which is not uh, safe, then you need to write work at height. Then the hazard is whatever you find you need to write there for example you find somebody is working in and around the inspection pit and you find that this person can fall from its edge to the inspection pit so here the hazard category is working at height and the hazard is working in and around the inspection pit so these both should be there then only you will score mark from this column 
The next column is who might be harmed and how. So here you need to write what kind of people are going to be affected or harmed from this hazard. For example, uh, for the, the, the hazard which we found already, or which we, discuss, which we discussed already, anyone working in and around the inspection pit. That is about uh, the who might be harmed. Then we need to describe how they can be harmed. So here uh, we can say likely injuries include bruising, sprains or strains, fractures or more serious injuries, example head, internal injuries, worst case death. These types of injuries are likely to be life changing and involve the worker being constant considerable pain. Example the worker may no longer be able to work after such a fall, need to rely on family or friends for constant care. So this is how we explain how a person can be harmed. Now the third column is what are you already doing? Means what are the existing control measures you find in the workplace? Here when it's this uh, third column and fourth column, fourth column is what further controls are required and these two uh, somewhat come neck to neck or hand in hand. Here we use the knowledge which you uh, got from your element 5 to 11 and these elements are describing various workplace hazards and what are the control measures. So uh, that will guide you how to complete this section. So what already you have that comes in column 3 and what additional control measures you find suitable which you learn from the element that comes in uh, column 4. So for example the, 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 uh, the, the hazard that we discussed uh, and what is already there uh, it can be when the inspection pit is in use the area is restricted by use of barriers for those working near the area. Another uh, existing control measure fixed stairs to allow safe access and ingress to the inspection pit. Inspection pit is covered when not in use. Another control, lone working is not allowed in the inspection pit. There are always at least two people working in the area. Another control, the workshop manager regularly monitors the use of access, equipment and work in the inspection pit. Now, uh, so these are the existing control measures found in the workplace. Now, you are going to write what further control or actions are required in column 4. So for example here, we can mention, first is a mobile bridge to allow mechanics to be able to safely access both sides of the inspection pit when working at ground level. Another control measure, add the bridge into the maintenance schedule, so it needs to be inspected at least every 6 months. Another control measure, arrange for all workers to be trained in how to use the bridge safely. So this is how we can manage. So one. Uh, column 3 will give what are the current control measures, the remaining control measures what is required to control the residual risk that comes in column 4. Now once this is completed, we can go to column 5 which is time scale for further actions to be completed. So you found further actions required in column 4. Now you need to give a time scale within how many days or how many months these control measures to be completed. For example, uh, the uh, first control measure we found was just a mobile bridge that's given that can give two months and bridge in the maintenance definitely when the bridge comes after two in two months then two months will be for the maintenance and given training again uh, within two months that this way we can allow the time scale. Once this is completed now you need to go to your column seek that is responsible person's jobs role. So who is responsible to purchase a mobile bridge? Uh, uh, that is workshop and store manager. Then who is responsible for uh, maintenance, adding maintenance? Then who is responsible for uh, providing training? So those kind of details means the person who is responsible to do, to complete this task can be listed in this sixth column. So I believe you got a, a, a clear idea how to complete your risk assessment sheet.